Welcome to the Contrarians. Here's our topic. You can only listen to five male singers for the rest of your life. Who do you pick? Well, the panel knows, so let's get started. Contrarians and to a Patreon suggested topic. This topic by our own Peter Jones. The topic for tonight: name five male singers that you. Uh-oh, I'm going to butcher it again. Say it, Peter Jones. What you is? You can it? only you can only listen to five male singers the rest of your life. Who there are you they? Go. And who are they? So we've got a great panel here. We've got Rand Kelly. We've got Butch. We've got Nick. We've got Andrew Clark's back. And then Peter Jones. Hey, Andrew Clark, have you been on any other shows since we had that one show? No, no. The, oh, God. This is in. All right. The second show. All right. Nice to have you back. Gentlemen, you. it's all nice to see you. We're going to have a great discussion. So I think the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to go clockwise the way I see it. So I'm going to go Butch, Nick, Andrew, Peter, and Rand, and around me. And we're going to go. Give us two picks and we'll go around. Give us another two and we'll go around and we'll follow up with one pick a piece. So, gentlemen, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Are you ready? Let's go. Very better. enthusiastic, for God's sake. <laughs> Butch is We're ready. ready. We're ready. All right, Butch, take it away. Give me your two. This is a really hard topic. Like, I thought it was going to be easy at first, but then you start thinking about it and you, I'm like doing calculus over here. Like, <laughs> you know, taking into account styles and moods and catalogs, you know, if I can only listen to this guy, like I I have guys on my list that are honorable mentions that I probably like better as singers, but I don't like their catalog as well or something like that. So we'll start with the easy ones and get them out of the way. Like, first of all, number one for me, Phil Linnett. <clears throat> I mean, I can't imagine going another day. They've grown to be the most indispensable band in my life and, um, hearing um i you know a life where i can't listen to phil sing again is not a life i want to live in so um definitely phil number one he has a a worldly um soulfulness to his voice um his storytelling just everything about his his voice he can he could sing mellow stuff he could sing soulful stuff he could sing heavier stuff and uh it's all great. So Phil Lynn, it's number one for me. Uh, number two is Ronnie James Dio. Um, he's been my favorite metal singer since I was a, a kid um, and always will be. Um, the power, the range, his deceptively high voice. Um, and then in addition, I mean, you get the vast catalog of great songs from Rainbow to Sabbath to his solo albums. Um, so definitely for me, it's Phil and then Ronnie James Dio is number two. Elf. Elf, too. I mean, that catalog's not as great as the other ones, but it's still Ronnie singing, so. So you'd be happy with just the Elf catalog? You could live with that? I mean, if if, if it was all I had to to get me to listen to Ronnie's voice, I mean, the, the guy That's was cool. a legend for a reason. I mean, you could see it even in that early stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the voice on the uh, uh, Carrie Libgren Seeds of Change. Uh, yep, the great. The Mask of the Great Deceiver. Oh my yep. God! Love that's is a, all from the Butterfly Ball. I mean, it's it's there and everything he's ever done. It's it's mm -hmm. just amazing the the voice on that guy. Yeah, that yeah. Carrie Livgren album. That's you need that if you're like I a completist. You need that. Oh, I love because that that's record. a great great track on that record. That's a good record. I like that record quite a bit. Yeah. All right, cool. Good two good ones, Butch. I like it. All right, Nick Esquire, you're up. Hey, thanks, thanks, Grant. Um, I'm going to start with uh, two rock guys. And I'll start with the guy that I've talked about probably more than any other person on the Contrarians since episode number one for me, and that would be Steve Marriott. And he would be my number one uh, unique combination of power, emotion, voice still moves me to this day, large catalog with the small faces, humble pie, solo, bootlegs, live stuff. Um, and don't believe me, just listen to uh, what people have to say about him from Paul Stanley to Robert Plant to Rod Stewart at all, on and on and on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he just does it for me. And uh, uh, as a shameless plug, you can go on uh, the algorithm and Spotify, check out Nick Esquire. I've got a little Marriott um, uh, primer on there as an overview, about four or five hours of s small faces, humble pie, rare stuff live. And it's just great. It's just uh, stuff I could go back to over and over again. That's number one. Number two, 
Um, Love your number shirt. Number two. Uh, well, spoiler alert. It'll be Jack Bruce. And uh, good. whether it's Jack on his own, Jack with Trower, Jack uh, with the uh, other almost uh, fusion-y stuff, Jack with uh, Leslie West, Leslie West, Leslie West. And this one album I talked about ages ago, which is one of my favorites. It's such a sleeper. No one has a oh, question yeah. of time. It's yeah. such a good album. But Alan Holbert's uh, on that, isn't he? J- Alan Holbert, Alan Holdsworth is on that album. But uh, yeah, he answers the question. Uh, yeah, why why are all the best vocalists from Scotland? Uh, he's just so good. He he, he can be very uh, emotional and tender, and he has such great power. Um, you know, from you know, you know the hits from White Room and Sunshine of Your Love, but also stuff like when he did End of the World with Gary Moore unbelievable uh singing duet with gary moore just that's how i really really he hit home with me that was the first song i'm like wow who is this guy and of course i went back to cream but um you know jack bruce to me is on a sample i've been able i saw him once solo saw him with cream when he did the reunion thing but uh yeah they would be my first two and my only two rock rock uh genre vocalists what question what do you prefer which steve merritt do you like the best well i think it's just the breadth of catalog would be humble pie uh, compared to other stuff, you know, when he the solo stuff, he started voice started to change a bit. So for me, it went from like maybe an eleven out of ten to maybe a little less than ten. Sometimes, sometimes, and, and the material was probably not up to scratch. Um, but probably for me, if I was going to dive into him uh, uh, when he was in full flower, probably the humble pie stuff. I know we talked on an episode where he had that one solo album, seventy six. It's just mm-hmm. his voice is unbelievable. I think the material is probably not not the best in the world, but uh, his voice is unbelievable, and I. For example, uh, <laughs> there's live one, um, but uh, this when they reformed the small faces, I mean, he's just over the top on this. Mm-hmm. Probably not the best material uh, or hardest rocking, but really, really good. And you can't go wrong with small faces. I mean, you know, you, you leave the yeah. states, and that's what he's known for the small faces. Uh, I'm still, you know, what, I'm still, I'm still a student of Jack Bruce, and I'm maybe a little bit of a student of, of uh, Marriott with the small faces. But uh, um, so there's still things to explore and discover with those two um jack bruce definitely and and he's got such a large catalog too but if i was going to do marriott it would be probably just the sweet spot would be humble pie yeah see i dig all that small faces stuff you can't go wrong not the reunion stuff no not that no i know know. span you know right oh brilliant hey nick i got to see humble pie i got to see humble pie in 1972 in at the cow palace no oh in las vegas convention center and clem clemson had just joined Peter mm-hmm. Frampton was gone. And uh, I also got to see Jack Bruce with Ringo Starr in the late 90s in Eureka, California. Oh, yeah, yeah that's Which awesome. was amazing. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. what a legend, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, Fantastic. cool. Yep. Fantastic is right. All right, two good, good picks. picks. Yeah, excellent. Andrew Clark. Mm-hmm. Give me something, Andrew Clark. All right. So I went to see a band in the late aughts. So 2007. Mm -hmm. And they, I was told before I went, this band is going to blow your mind. You're going to come home and say, this is one of the best shows I've ever seen. So it was Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. And I did come away from it going, that was one of the best shows I've ever seen. But the guy that impressed me the most was David Crosby. And when I was trying to come up with a mix of things that I would want to hear, because mostly I'm a hard rock and metal guy. But David Crosby, when I'm feeling mellow, when I'm wanting to hear something just incredible, I think he just has the voice of an angel. I could not believe it. And then about 10 years before he died, he came to Morgantown, West Virginia, and I got to see him do a solo show with uh, the guys from Snarky Puppy. If I'm not wrong, I wouldn't swear to that. Yeah. But... He was so unbelievable. He had a cold. He was like hawking and spitting all over the place. It was kind of disgusting, but his voice still sounded great. I was like, this is unbelievable. And they finished up their whole show. I checked to see what they were doing, and it was all stuff off the new album. So the girl from the band that he was with comes out and goes, I've got a special treat for you. David never does this. He hasn't done it all tour, but he wants to do another song for you guys. And it's going to be a Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, or Crosby, Stills, Nash, I think, song, Marrakesh. Yeah. So he comes back and does that. It was the only time he did it the entire tour in West Virginia. I was like, I don't get it, but I'm so glad because it was um, it. it awesome. was so much fun. Yeah, that's a Graham Nash song anyway. Okay. That's what he did, though. 
That's cool. Oh, yeah. It is a Graham Nash song. But you know, we're writing a uh, Mary Yeah. Fish. Yeah. I'm going to do it too. vocal on that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. It was so much fun. And I loved his the solo records that he did right before he died, the last like 10 years of his life. I think those are so incredible, so underrated. I. I, I just love his voice. Oh, his first solo album, if I could only remember my name, is just a masterpiece. See, I listen to I listen to it and it just doesn't do the same thing that the last Really? Years I think it's great. Time. Well, it's a I chill out great. album, you know, it doesn't really rock. Yeah. Yeah, it might just go well, I mean, so are the, the last ten years of his life records too. Those are definitely, for me at least, mellow records. My yeah. favorite song, if you don't mind me telling you, is no. uh, Four Way Street when he does triad. Oh my god, my heart just sinks when I like that. Yeah. And it's a really weird song. I mean, if you really, really, really check the lyrics out, you can tell what it's all <laughs> well, you about. Well, you heard the, bird, the original Birds version, right? No. Yeah. I didn't know they did it. Well, it was, it's a bird, it was a bird song, and Roger McGuinn rejected it. It was recorded I for, uh, <laughs> it was recorded for um, Notorious Bird Brothers. Check yeah, it out. It's, it's out there. When Graham gets on the uh, microphone and says, I'm not sure what mood David is in tonight, but we'll just have to see where it goes. And like you go, okay. <laughs> and then when it's over, you're, did I just hear that? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I, will, I do not know people? that one, and I'll check it out. Yeah. Who are those people he's talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Andrew, All right. what's your number two? My number two is Greg Graffin from uh, Bad Religion. Incredible, right. incredible singer. I think he brought the melody into that band because they're mostly straight ahead, bar chord, punk rock, but he's got the melody. They've got the background, as my friend calls them, oozing Oz band. But I just love them. I just saw them a couple months ago. They were fantastic still. they He's got the greatest lyrics. He's just, he's smart. He's a college professor. I think up in New York somewhere, Cornell. Where's Cornell? I don't know, but New York. That's okay. New York. I was correct then. Um, but he's like a, a college professor. He writes the most intelligent lyrics. He doesn't. He sings them in a way that's interesting and fun, and nobody else pronounces words like he does. <laughs> I just love him. Yeah. So cool. That's my number two. All right. Thank you, Andrew Clark. Excellent choice. Let's throw it over to Peter Jones. What's your all turn? right? Well, this is a fun topic so far. Some great choices. Um, I'm going to start with um, the way I looked at it when I kind of posed the topic was um, not so much catalogs or bands. I'm focusing more on the qualities of the singer himself. Um, tone, delivery, pitch, um, color, uh, ability to deliver a lyric, that kind of thing. So there may be catalogs that I would have preferred to, you know, quote, kind of desert island. But these are all singers that I really gravitate to purely in from a technical or a singing standpoint. Um, the first one, I fell in love with this guy the first time I heard his voice. There's a uniqueness about him. Um, he never sings out of his range. He's always controlled. Uh, his pitch is excellent. He can really cover a whole wide group of styles. And that's going to be Mr. Eric Bloom from wow. Bloister Cult. Um, just really one of the unique and special voices of, of rock. Um, he, of course, will, along with Buck, make a pretty formidable tandem because um, their vocal qualities are extremely different. Uh, Buck's a lot lighter, and therefore he translated to more of the hits. Um, and Eric had a little more edge to him. And I think of him purely as a 70s style singer, um, which is something that is very appealing. Um, but I just it, there's nothing that he can sing that I don't like. Um, so he could pretty much anything even out of the catalog. If he was singing the phone book, I'd, I'd be happy. Um, so Eric's my first choice. The second choice is a singer that's completely different. Um, this is somebody who kind of just came out of nowhere. And this is one of the discoveries. And when we talk about album covers and bands that you find strictly by accident, um, the EP came out, it came on, I heard this voice and it just never let up and it's never let up since. And that's Mr. Jeff Tate from Queensryche. Um, there is a, a something special <laughs> about this guy. 
And I even think to this day that he's maybe even still underappreciated, uh, you know, when you talk about the Halfords and the Dickinsons and, and people like that, Jeff to me has to be in tandem and parallel with singers like that. Um, his range, his, uh, energy, his diction, um, his power is, is just exceptional. And he's got such a unique tone and you always know that it's him. And that's another thing about Eric that I love. These are two singers you would never mistake for somebody else. And I think that's an admirable quality. So uh, I will go with Jeff Tate for my second choice in this round. You know, it almost sounds like he's crying sometimes when he goes really high. You know what I mean? Like when you cry, you get you can you kind of get your voice really, really high, but you really don't notice it. You're just like way up there anyway. Right. And when he does like Operation Mind Crime or definitely Rage for Order. Oh my God, yeah. what, a, what an album that is. Well, I think that's what, their best album. It's my album. favorite too. And what I love about him, and there's a kind of a consistency that goes along through singers if you start to analyze them vocally. Um Jeff is he's not a tenor, he's a baritone. And that surprises people because obviously a tenor has a naturally higher timbre. But it's been shown over and over, and even his replacement, Todd Latore, who is exceptional in his own right. Um, these are t these are baritones with a naturally lower speaking voice, speaking voice. So they have yeah. elements that can carry from from a, the higher range of a, of, a, of a bass. But when they learn to do a blend, and I'm sorry, I'm getting tech here. When they learn, when you learn to do a blend in your voice between your head voice and your falsetto, you get this really good. If it if it's really well trained, and he exceptionally is well trained, you get this high mix that allows this really strong extension. Mm -hmm. And Jeff's got it, and Todd has it, and there's a lot of other ones that you would hear that when you hear their speaking voices, you go, oh. That kind of doesn't <laughs> that kind of doesn't match because they talk more down here where the bear yeah, are. Bruce so, Dickinson is another one. Yeah. And so anyways, um, yeah, I think he's he's amazing. Uh, so much power. And it, it's, it is so nice to hear uh, late in his career now that some of his elements of his voice have come back. Um, he went through a stretch where it was kind of rough, um, but he's singing better than he has in a long, long time. And let's face it, you can't sing like that forever. <laughs> it's, it's, I just saw him a month ago. Yeah. And he sounded incredible. He sounded yeah. just like he did in the 80s. Yeah, he's incredible. much more comfortable. He's not He's not avoiding. I mean, he's, he's still not, you know, breaking glass like he did when he was younger. No, none of us do. <laughs> but he's he's not avoiding notes like he did for a long time where he would skirt around them or go to an alternative or even go an octave lower like um, robert plant well you know like most you know um but it's it's incredible that and i'm glad that he's he's sounding better and that both he and what todd is doing with kareen zorik are, are solid on their own and, and i'm glad that both of them are doing well because i i like them both so anyway awesome excellent awesome. all right Rand Kelly, you're up. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, so I'm glad you said two at, at the beginning because I'm going to do them all with one prop. Both, I mean, both of them with one prop. No, oh, outstanding. John Lennon, Paul McCartney, they go together to me like peanut butter and jelly. And, you know, the first song, and I didn't know it back then in 1964 when I, when, when I first got this album, but I didn't know that I Want to Hold Your Hand was the two of them blending the lead vocal. And it and it's really unique that they do that. And when they did it on stage, they they did to, there too. But mm -hmm. later on in the um, in the bridge, the second bridge, Paul splits up, goes above John, and they do the dual harmony, and it's just beautiful. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough. I could listen to these guys until the day I die. This is my ultimate favorite band. I say a lot of the times, I say yes is my favorite band only because these guys broke up just about the time that I found out about yes it was very close about a year apart or something and then it, oddly enough on the first yes album that I didn't know about for years they did a cover of one of these guys' songs from Beatles 65 uh, no it was Beatles 6 to me every little thing was the last song on Beatles 6 and the yes version just absolutely blew my mind but I love I love John Lennon I love Paul McCartney I was listening to him today 
I listen to Mind Games, and I listen to all the best, and I just uh, can't say enough about these guys. Great choice. Great choice. Yeah, you know, in fact, Rand, it's such a great choice. You might as well hold that back up again. Okay. Because <laughs> great minds think alike, Rand, because that's exactly my choice. You were oh, mentioning, really? well, duh. That's your favorite. <laughs> my number one. I, didn't mean I to couldn't steal go. Your thunder. I'm just no, no, no. There's stuff. no thunder it's stealing. It's chronological here. for me because I was 11 years old when I saw them on Ed Sullivan on February well, 9th, 1964. Actually, well, I was only. Yeah, really. Well, when I got my gateway drug was listening to She Loves You on my friend's 45. Next door neighbor plate. Well, actually, I saw the picture, the picture sleeve. And I went, wow, those guys are kind of cool. Up in that time, I was listening to uh, Disneyland records. You know, my folks watch Lawrence Welk at night. Yeah, they kept so me mine. sheltered from that. They didn't listen to any pop music. They Sing were from the 40s. They, the they, they like Benny Goodman. Yeah. So when I saw that Beatles picture you know the, the the sleeve for the 45 i went wow look at those guys you know yeah. i didn't know anything it was like 1975 and i said can i listen to this and i heard it it just blew my mind and ever since yeah you know that was that was it so the same thing john lennon paul mccartney the blend i do love the new one now and then i love listening to john on that it's so intimate so vulnerable right they did a great job on the sound of that yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if the two of you agree, or the rest of you, specifically Rand and uh, Grant, since you uh, chose them. Yeah, I think historically over time, we have lost focus, and we have spent more time admiring them, and rightly so, as as songwriters, and less as artists, as musicians, and I think it's high time that that trend change a bit. And it is really good to see both of these choices. There are very few, and you can go to, to some of the really super great uh, bands. You know, look, even someone like a Peter, Paul, and Mary, mm -hmm. where there's something in the DNA that those voices, when they blend, almost create a third voice. Mm -hmm. When John and Paul sing together, there's almost a th something comes out of it, like a third. Well, something it's like cross. Well, George, it's George like Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Yes, you know George is, and I, I don't mean to, to to deny George is due, but he. I mean, because I'll say it, he is. You know, he is the third harmony, and right. on so many songs. But there are a lot. Of, I counted one time the uh, the the tunes that John and Paul and George sing by themselves. John's got like thirty five songs without harmony. Mm. Right. And Paul has less than that, and George has less than Paul. And they're known for their harmonies. So it's amazing how many songs the Beatles put out. Like Can't Buy Me Love has absolutely no harmony, and most people wouldn't even notice because of the 12-string guitar and the background and piano and, right. and all that's mm -hmm. going on in that song. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's just an amazing uh, career that they had. They, they literally changed the world overnight. But uh, there's a lot of great vocal blends, you know. Of course, nothing's like Crosby, Stills, and Nash when they sing together. It's just absolutely unbelievable. You know, it's like the heavens open up, you know? But anyway, well, so, yeah, yeah exactly. but you know what I mean. There's just magic. Magic. Anyway, so there you go. Rand and I chose uh, the Beatles. That knocked two of ours out. Let's uh, throw it over to Butch for his next two. <clears throat> okay. I'm actually going to hop on to the topic since we're on it. Um, and I, I did want to say uh, what Peter was saying. I, I, part of the I think part of one of the things that's kind of sad as well about um, the Beatles not being as recognized for their musicianship and artistry um, as much. I mean, you know, as generations come along and get into music, I mean, the, 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 the technology that's exploded since the 60s and, you know, not to mention the fact that a lot of those technological advances started with things the Beatles did in the studio. So, but I think people forget or don't realize that at one time to get great performances, you had to go into the studio and be prepared and sing. Like they went in and sang. like, I was reading, uh, I remember reading, um, I think it was Bob Spitz's biography about the Beatles when they were recording um, uh, Twist and Shout. They had to get the track done. Lennon had to sing it like innumerable times, like over and over and over again. His voice was beyond the point 
of cracking, but he like sang it over. I mean, that's what they had to do. Like singers had to go in and actually sing. There wasn't like this. I mean, I go in the studio when I've been in the studio, I can record a vocal like 10 times if I want, and we can cut and paste the, the best pieces and, you know, and get the best performance. Like back in the day, like those guys, you know, sang together yeah. around the microphone. I mean, it's unbelievable. But uh, so um, John Lennon was, was my pick. I didn't pick him and Paul, but uh, I do love them both. Um, and the reason I picked John over Paul is three words in my life. Um, my favorite song of all time. And uh, again, like going to the, you know, in addition to, you know, loving the Beatles catalog, I just love that song. Um, so I, I would need to be able to listen to that at some point. Um, and then uh, I had a couple other singers picked, but I'm going to um, audible on this one after Peter described what he was actually thinking behind this. So I'm going to go with Glenn Hughes. Oh, yes. Um, and my sure. initial thought on Glenn was I like his catalog, but there's some of the stuff that he did. He's either like, like in Deep Purple, he's more of a background counter to Coverdale instead of just a straight up lead. Um, and while I, I really like his solo catalog, but it's not, um, it's not at like the catalog isn't as great as his voice. But the thing about Glenn is, I mean, I've only seen three singers in my lifetime live that brought me to near tears. They were so good. I just saw Glenn Hughes. It's like a month ago now. And and Glenn was, he was so good that I was just like, I was honestly like, I thought I was going to start crying just from the quality of his voice, especially considering, you know, 70 years old um, can still hit every note in the yeah. book it was unbelievable yeah. i mean the He's only other singers that ever i mean there's a lot of singers that have like uh there's a lot of emotion in their voice and stuff but this is just based on pure like just oh my god i i can't believe i'm hearing something this good was it was uh the three for me were glenn hughes tom jones and then jay buchanan from rival sons now i've heard a lot of great singers in my in my life um but glenn um so i'm definitely gonna add glenn on my list he's been awesome. he's one of my top five singers forever yeah um so that's my that's my next one. A black country comedian is just amazing, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. All right, cool, Butch. Good choices. All right, let's throw it over to Nick Esquire. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Butch, you ever hear uh, Glenn's Christmas album? <laughs> I've heard from that yet, all the way through. All right, yeah, it's 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 good. It's but it's like Kenny G arrangements, and then over the top, Glenn. That's the <laughs> thing. Like I listened to some of it. It was like the, the arrangements for it. I wasn't in the mood for <laughs> that kind of thing at the time. I'm, it's on the list though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. When, oh, yeah. that, when was that released? Oh, it's about uh, 10, 15, 15 okay. years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Small label. Yeah. You know, if you like Christmas music and you like Glenn Hughes, what could be better? But hey, yeah, check, out Bo check out boys club with Keith Emerson and uh, <clears throat> uh, that other guy. Um, and I can't think of his name right now, but uh, uh, Benilla, Mark Mark Benilla. Yeah, I think that's it. it. That's it's an like amazing it's album. He does guitar Tarkas. Player. He yeah. plays. He sings all of Tarkas on that live. And they were they recorded it in San Francisco at some small small club. But that's really good. Wow, how oh, cool! All right, Nick, go ahead. Yeah, my next choice will be non rock. Um, I'm gonna, you know, uh, Bruce Jack Bruce and Steve Marriott evoke emotion for me. Then they have power. This next vocalist is different in that uh, when I hear him, he always puts me in a good mood. He's a crooner, uh, makes me feel better, uh, maybe even soothes the soul. Um, not necessarily known as being a powerful singer, but I, I like his voice. Uh, in keeping with uh, Peter's, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the theme that he had. So I'm going to choose the pride of Steubenville, Ohio. Oh, I knew you were We're very Dino. proud of him here in Dino, Ohio. Dino Crescetti. Uh, uh, otherwise known as Dean Martin, um, like his like his voice, large catalog. He 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 had this. He he, he sort of sang effortlessly, and uh, people thought he was sort of trying to emulate uh, Bing Crosby. He always said he was trying to emulate the Mills Brothers, but um, I just like his voice. It just seems like he's effortless. He could, but he can sing with power. Um, and um, you know, he has he can inhabit this space where it's almost like this uh, pop, almost a little bit of rock. You hear drums in there. You hear some guitar sometimes, some country. And so um, I really have always enjoyed his voice. And I think if you're going to go pick someone to five voices that you're only going to hear forever, which is a world I don't want to live in, by the way, I don't know if I <laughs> five voices, but if we're going to pick the five, 
he's got that lightness for me. He always puts me in a good mood. And I think in that genre, he's for me at the top of the heap, which is probably a contrarian opinion because you know who the other people would be uh, who usually inhabit that space, but I think he's the best. Um, second uh, choice, I'll go country. I've mentioned him before. Uh, he's also a guy who has 100 albums, 74 solo, a bunch of uh, uh, collaborations, but I'll go Willie. I was and say- he's sort of the- he can write the music. He can play the music. He's one with his guitar. Uh, technically, maybe not the best singer, but boy, he can convey an emotion. Just listen to uh, uh, Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground if you want to hear what I'm talking about. And that, to me, conveys uh, he can do the old some of his old style stuff. He can uh, harmonize his older stuff. He has a bit of a deeper voice. As he got older, he got more nasally, more tenor, tenor ridden. It's still holding up decently today. Um Although I think he is past his prime, but uh, almost 400 songs written by the man himself plus all the covers he's done over the years. And uh, he still moves me with his voice. I've seen him live. And it's just been uh, incredible uh, to see him play and sing. And uh, in later years, sometimes he likes to talk, sing through some of his vocals. So when I've seen I've seen him do that, when he, when I sort, he sort of kind of mails it in. So you got to catch him on a good night when he actually sings, which I've been fortunate enough to see. But as far as his catalog goes, it's sort of impeccable. So I'll go with Willie and Dean. Non rock genre, good stuff. Impressive. Marshmallow World is my favorite song by Dean Martin. Oh yeah, that's a great one. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I've heard Christmas. it so many times when I was working. You know, they would play it every Christmas. Yeah. So right. And, uh, Isaac and I just fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right, let's keep her moving. Andrew Clark, what you got? All right. So my next guy is one of my favorite metal singers, World Dane from Nevermore, from Sanctuary. But I didn't see him. I didn't even know who he was until the Nevermore catalog came out. And I started listening to him and just fell in love with his voice. He has these incredible highs that are just histrionic. And then um, these lows. And he talks a lot in this stuff. I just love the tone of his voice. Um, His, um, oh, I knew I'd forget the name of this album. Oh, shoot. The third album by Nevermore. And it's got a song called Year of the Dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a little obscure. Yeah. Um, but I just love that. Um, Year of the Dog. Is that Dreaming called- Neon Black, that record? Dreaming Neon Black. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Butch. I saw him twice on that record, once opening up for Merciful Fate. And the once they came out and did a tour headlining, and they performed the entire album, Dreaming Neon Black, in its entirety. It was so incredible. And they finish that up and the they come back out for an encore and they go, we can either do one of two songs and they listed a Nevermore song and everybody went quiet and then they go, or we can do Battle Angels by Sanctuary. And apparently, I was right up front, apparently some guy just off to my right shoulder lost his shit. <laughs> he he lost it so much world leans over and he's looking like directly over my right shoulder he goes calm down dude we're gonna do the song <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh i love this man and i got to see him one more time uh years later on gigantor with megadeth but that was my favorite album it i still listen to it once about every month two weeks it's so good but his whole catalog with Sanctuary and then solo stuff, and he's gone now, so we won't get any more. But I got to see him three times and just some of my favorite music. Awesome. Uh, okay. Now my next one is Neil Fallon from Clutch. I saw him on probably one of his very first tours open up for Sepultura. I didn't care for his vocals at all. He had a very like hardcore type voice. I was like, I don't like this. And I didn't listen to him for like another decade. And they come out with the From Beale Street and Beyond album. And Electric Worry comes out as the single. I am hooked. I'm like, this can't be Neil Fallon. He sucks. I don't like him at all. (laughs) (laughs) And then I, I go back, listen to a couple more records back, and he has got this thing going with his voice where he doesn't sound like the hardcore vocalist that he started out as. He has developed into this almost like modern blues singer. 
And I just love his stuff. I listen every time they put a new album out. I am just hooked for the next month. It's going to be nothing but listen to Neil Fallon and clutch and just love it. It's it's they've simplified somehow and they just make some of the best rock records over the last couple decades. But Neil Fallon is the man again, great lyrics, fantastic lyrics, great voice. I love Neil Fallon. That's it. Yeah, he made he made a real turn um around there throughout their catalog as as it went on. Like you said, I mean, he went from being a fair kind of tuneless bellower to a Parker. Like you said, like he's like got this bluesy like yep. thing going with his voice now. Like and I I think the, the this back half of their catalog has been the best stuff they ever did. Like I yeah. liked early stuff, but they're like a special band now and uh live like there's no one like this guy like you feel like no matter where you are in the audience and he has looked at you at some point because he is his eyes are never anywhere that on the crowd while he's delivering every line it's yeah. uh it's amazing he's incredible yeah, yeah he, he can work a, he can work a crowd he definitely yeah. and i think he i think he just grew into his voice and they grew into their sound it's what you get when you stay together and you keep at it that long it's like and then they blend humor with all sorts of interesting lyrics it's like he's just he's like another level I know Martin his loves him a lot too. His but... lyrics are, are awesome. I mean, if you can write a lyrics about making like what was it, crab cakes? Crab cakes. <laughs> yes. best, best song about crab cakes I've ever heard. It's incredible. <laughs> Hot bottom feeder. Holy mackerel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. Excellent. Andrew Clark. All right. Peter Jones, throw it over to you. Uh, this next singer I discovered via my older sisters. Again, thank them um, for exposing me to an entire decade earlier than I would have naturally been exposed to. Um, when I raided their collection and heard this, uh, there was life before and there was life after. Um, also, this is a singer who I don't think gets the respect uh, amongst his peers. Um, and that's a tragic oversight. Um, most people in the hard rock metal world, um, you're attributed to either Sabbath or Zeppelin. Occasionally, the smarter, more wise people will include the most important third element, and then that's Deep Purple and Ian Gillen. You just can't leave him out. They are not the third wheel. They are equal wheels. They, this Deep Purple is as important and essential as anything Sabbath or Zeppelin ever did. And to my ears, I would contend that of those three, Ian was the more consistent, the stronger, the more versatile, and especially live, he was untouchable during the era of 70 to 73. I've heard so many bootlegs. I own a million of them. He's never bad, ever. <laughs> and he was the first screamer and but he didn't scream in a harsh way it was pleasant and it was in pitch and it had color and it had vibrato and it had personality plus he had this beautiful rich lower voice that was so appealing there's not a lot of the screamers who could do anyone's daughter and pull it off and he does, and it's authentic, and it sounds amazing. He, I, I do think it's one of Rock's biggest tragedies that they couldn't have worked out their differences in 73 and stayed together longer. Um, the catalog's way too short. Their time is too short. And I think they missed a lot of years where they really could have produced some really serious, amazing stuff. Um, but... Anything Gillen sings, and I, I'll throw down. There's a million people since who have done Gethsemane from Jesus Christ Superstar, but no one's touching Gillen's ever. That's the best. I was gonna. I was gonna tack that on there, Peter. That, yeah, ever. that's the first time I ever heard him was on Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. I discovered that with my sisters. Had no idea who this guy was. And then my next door neighbors, who had five boys, the youngest was my age, so they were all significantly older. And I heard in rock in their house and all of a sudden you can't mistake the same that tonal screen because i had uh jesus christ superstar and blazing into my head and all of a sudden i'm hearing child in time and going that's the guy 
sure enough, there it was. And, uh, you know, Peter meet rabbit hole. Right. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, I love this guy. Absolutely. Yeah, love, love, love his singing. Love him. Yeah, I love him on the black Sabbath album too. He's I amazing. He's great on that. Yeah. He's all of his solo stuff, both the, both Gillen and the Ian Gillen band. Amazing stuff he's done since uh there's just the, the the notion that he was somehow washed up or they had blown his voice out at certain stages is grossly overrated oh yeah yeah he's got some serious serious stuff and yeah. even now you know what no he's not going to be able to do you know the things he did back then but you can still listen to his natural lower voice even now with purple he sounds really good oh Bush was awesome he's the he's last still, three have been awesome he still sounds great um my fourth one um i was going to just do them as a, a concede to the court kind of thing but i'll throw them out there anyways um you really can't say enough i mean i mean the picture says a thousand words it's ronnie i mean there's just there's just just you just look him up you look up brilliance in the in the dictionary under brilliant singer and his pictures there a thousand times mm -hmm. um such an enigma um <laughs> He could literally sing everything and anything. And he, and he did, um, you know, his legacy even well before Elf. Um, you know, this guy lived through the entire evolution of rock and roll, the entire mm -hmm. history. He was a part of it. He was there. He was creating. He was influencing and influenced by. And, and it just makes no sense. He never warmed up. He drank. He smoked. He did everything you should not do. And it just didn't affect him one iota. And it was just that one guy was amongst the smallest handful of singers that laid in their in their lives were just as good or even even better than they were when they were younger. And that's just so rare and so special. And I miss him every freaking day. Um, but we get new stuff. This is going to be a shameless plug. If you have not heard the box set for Live Evil, you are missing out. There's a <laughs> there's a there's a re there's a, a remaster, which is fine, but that's not the gem. The gem's the remix. Wow, they've added. It's some extra stuff. They've added little nuances here and there. I I knew every hiccup in that record, and there's new little things and twists. And, oh, my God, it sounds unbelievable. And it is a power that has never been equaled by uh, very, 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 very few singers. Um, so if you have not heard the remix and you're a fan of Ronnie, it's a, that's a must, must hear. So uh, Ian Gillen. And Ronnie James Dio are my great team. choices. There you go. Thank you. Cool. Rand Kelly, you're up. Okay. I'm not going to take a lot of time with this. No, nah, because we have a, to wrap this dog up pretty I can damn do soon. A, a Marcel Marceau version of it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> this is where I started, folks. <laughs> it's like, good God, this album blew my mind. Uh, what can I say? It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with this album. John Anderson is amazing. I just got done listening to Years of No Disgrace, and it's harmony vocal halfway through the song, and John comes in after the guitar solo by himself. That's the first time you get to hear him sing on this album. But your move was a single on the radio, and that's where I heard about him, and that's all I got to say. There's an That's another vocal blend, Chris Squire <clears throat> and John Anderson together. And Steve like Howe, again, with the three-part harmony. Yeah, I don't People, know about people Steve forget Howell. about Steve. Steve's all over this album. He sings on all those harmonies. He's always the low guy. He sings the low guy. It's in a way he's like the George Harrison of the yes of yes. But boy, he can't sing a note. But he blends in well. I don't believe that, but I think he blends in. Have well. you heard him, Brian? For God's sake, all of it. I can prick on the brain. Done. Well, quick side note: we don't want to get tinged. Better than me. Here. Look, Grant, you have a you have a good point. If you take someone out of the context. Mm -hmm. Perfect example is we were talking about bands that blended. Michelle Phillips does not have a very good voice. Right. You put her in with the other three. Magic. Beyond magic. Yeah, that's what that was my good point. point. That's a good that's point. What I was saying. On her own. No, thank you. Blending right. works better than blending works better than solo vocal for a, a mediocre singer. 
Always. Well, I, I would well, not yeah. say they're mediocre because the harmonist, the one who has to blend with the other person is exceptionally gifted because the lead line is the lead line. You've got to work into the lead line. Sometimes the lead singer sings sharp. You have to go with them. Sometimes they're singing flat. You have to go with them. There you go. You want me to, you wanted me to do two, right? No, yeah. Or you can do the yep. third one if you want. We can break leg. Yeah. This is the first time I heard him. Yeah, Greg likes great. No. Amazing. This is the Stephen Wilson Deluxe. Good God. You can't believe you got this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, this album is just, it changed my life. I mean, but Greg is awesome on this. And people tend to put downside too. I don't understand that. I just listened to Bitches Crystal and was absolutely thrilled. I think the guy was absolutely amazing. And I, I hadn't heard King Crimson yet. That was a much later thing for me. So there you go. And oh yeah, uh, okay, I'll do the third one real quick. Oh sure, why not? Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. He's <laughs> become my he's become my favorite singer to this day. Oh really? Cool. He's amazing. I yeah. this new music he's been putting out is just fantastic. I can't wait for the next one. Well, uh, Peter December Gabriel's 1st. very unique. But I well, would... yeah, he's releasing one song every full moon since January, but the it ends on December first. He's going to release the album. I oh, I love it. I mean, it's just it's so emotional, way different than anything you'd expect. It's, and again, he's always groundbreaking, always trying. He's like the Jeff Beck of vocalists. He's always trying something new. Never goes back and repeats what he's done. Yeah. All right, Brian, that's an excellent choice. Was there another one? Was that, oh yeah, you did your three. No, that was Jesus. it. Okay. That, the reason I picked Foxtrot because that was the first time I heard him. Okay, that's good. All right, my three, I'll do real quick. Um, I'm going to go with Lou Graham, which I think he still sounds great. Even yeah. though he's been through a lot, he's had that brain tumor, but I saw him in um, on the 80s cruise in March. No, he's not exactly what he was, but he still has that power. He still can pull it off. The crowd loved him. He sounds great, but man, back when he was in his peak during that foreigner stuff, God, so smooth. And just unmistakable. What can I say? Uh, my other pick, and as you know, it always comes back to Cheap Trick. And I'm <laughs> Rob Robin Zander. Zander, because Robin Zander, for God's sakes, still can bring it. He does. He, his voice hasn't even changed. Mm. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I've seen them twice. <laughs> Must have They've made a deal with somebody. Mind. But uh, Robin Zander, of course, is great. I We'll always have Cheap Trick, always have to listen to Cheap Trick. And you know, those foreigner albums, you know, the core best foreigner albums. Actually, I like the Lou Graham solo stuff's really good. Me I too. wish there was more Lou out there than there is. Um, and then my uh, other one is I just had a brain crisis. What was it? It was, um, we did Cheap Trick, we did Lou Graham. I'm going to go with, um, God, I forgot. I had it all prepared. It's not Brian. Mark, no. Mark Farner? Mark Farner? Farner? It's, Mark, it's uh, Don Brewer. Oh, Mark there you Farner. Go. <laughs> I still don't care for Mark Farner very much. I like Don Brewer quite a, quite a bit. Um, I can't remember what I was going to be. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We, I, I, we'll come back if I remember. I, Miles Goodwin? No, not Miles. <laughs> I'm, just, yeah, Brian, I'm just going through I, the list of bands. All right, I'm going to go with Brian Wilson because gonna, even though yeah, Brian's voice Brian was shot. Wilson, but I didn't choose it because I thought you would. All right, I'll choose it then. I could okay. easily okay. put Brian Wilson in there. When he was at his peak, we're talking 66, 67, absolutely stunning. I mean, there are tracks out there. When he's sitting at the piano for that Leonard Bernstein show on, they did yeah. on CBS where he's playing. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Surf's up with the piano, just him singing Surf's up. I saw that on a Sunday night. I that was, Yeah, that was yeah, great. But that video, go on YouTube and look at it. It's just like the... Right. Gates of heaven are opening up, you know, but then they're in the sandbox <laughs> all together when they would sing, you know, and there's plenty of documentation out there. Them all together. And when Brian would arrange the vocals, it was magic. When Brian wasn't arranging the vocals, they weren't quite as good. And if they did the vocals without Brian, it wasn't as good. But he, you know, he smoked so much and did all that. Yeah, you listen to him. I love you. He destroyed he's, his he's... voice. Yeah, love you. He's really bad. But when he was a kid in his mid twenties, oh. Mm -hmm. oh, don't worry, baby. Oh my God. Oh, good example. Hey, did you notice John Lennon stole that chord progression for starting over? 
When da, 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 I, da, 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 the, that part is like there's only so many corporations, <laughs> Rand. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he really, really did steal it. I would, I would <laughs> suggest that either Brahms, Beethoven, or Bach had already played it. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's already been done, but yeah. no, I'll have to listen to it again and listen for it. So there you go. There, I'll go with Brian Wilson. That's just as good as anything. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be Todd Rundgren. So that's my oh, yeah. honorable mention was oh, Todd Rundgren, cool. who still sounds great. You listen to his entire catalog, even the new stuff. Todd can sing anything, yeah. and he's absolutely a wonderful singer. So he's got song. too many albums; I can't keep track. He's, he's just put that's he's what put so many do. out. I just saw him last year do the David Bowie tribute. He was amazing. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. And I finally saw him with Utopia because I'd never seen him before, and it, that was amazing yeah. too. Utopia was great because you had that vocal blend with him and Chasm. Are you talking the pop version of Utopia? No, it was just the recent tour that. Oh they yeah, did. I saw that. Oh, but right Chasm singing yeah. and Chasm and Todd together because yeah. Chasm's very Beatlesque, and he and Todd have a great blend. So whatever, too, you know, Willie. Yeah. All right, every we're just gonna keep going. Butch, what's your uh, what's your next one? I'm going to go with uh, the first, the first, um, the first guy that, uh, you know, the first band and the first singer that ever made me fall in love with music, with, with rock. And that's Kiss and that's Paul Stanley. Um, Great choice. And uh, I'll say this. Um, it's a shame. Uh, Paul um, takes the beating that he does now. I, I think because his voice has been, De degenerating for so you know it's long enough now and now the the thing with the backing tapes live people forget especially non-kiss fans and that's a whole other topic we won't get into but um people forget like that at, at his peak which i would put like from the mid 80s through into the mid 90s like this guy could sing like no one like it, that, any of those hair metal guys like none of them could keep up with him i don't think he was you all you have to do is listen to the version of i still love you on mtv's unplugged the yeah. mtv unplugged record mm -hmm. that they did not only i mean that's not the i mean there and on like tons of live recordings throughout that era i mean he always had a great voice in the 70s it's unique no one sounds like him um he's got a power to his voice and he has a great sense of melody um and you know as he went on like he really pushed himself like probably to the detriment of his own voice now i mean right he get he sang he sang out of his range a lot like once he got into the 80s he was trying to keep up so he's singing higher and higher and higher but he would like would just like smoke most of those singers back then he was incredible um and that's why as far as i'm concerned he gets a pa i don't care what he does now i don't care if he's fully lip syncing now he gets a pass he's long since yeah past the point of having to prove himself to anybody for for what uh what he's done um over the year both uh you know and i think he doesn't i think he gets uh he doesn't get the credit he deserves as a songwriter either but uh um so that's the i mean kiss was the first band that i got into uh paul's always been one of my favorite vocalists um among many um so i i couldn't imagine not listening to uh to paul so well, Butch, did you hear the soul station album yeah, it's pretty good. The, the only problem yeah, but he is, sounds like, Paul sounds great on it. He sound he he does sound great. Like I I will say though, like you can even though it's a studio, like you can still hear like where man, it would have been so much better if he did that Soul Station record like before he had the throat surgery and before mm -hmm. his voice, mm -hmm. you know, became what it did. Like if he had done that record way back, like in the nineties, yeah. um, I can only imagine like what he could have done like as far as like bring in like a more power to it but that's a good record i mean yeah he's i think he sounds fine you know he sounds a lot better on that than he does on well live that's for sure let me yeah. just suggest this when people are going after paul name me another band that's first of all been around as long as they have mm -hmm. who took zero breaks zero other than a tour maybe for you know unmasked or something where they didn't play for a year that's not what i'm that's not what i'm talking about but you know def leppard took forever just to make a record they disappeared for <laughs> years at a time yeah. okay mm -hmm. no breaks year they've, after they've year worked, after year after year 
they've worked harder than uh, people like la like people forget like how hard that band worked they, like people are like, i don't understand they're overrated and i'm like you know what that band like clawed for like every inch of ground that they got they worked harder than any band in the 70s when they were trying to get big and they yeah. worked their asses off and especially paul stanley when gene simmons was out you know trying to mogul in hollywood paul carried that band on his back for years throughout their whole successful period in the in the right. 80s right. and uh you know P i at, at the least he deserves respect for what he's done with that well that era when gene was going to go hollywood did they keep I don't remember. I kind of checked out by then. Ace was gone. Peter was gone. I I was yeah. gone. Um, did they continue to tour? Well, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, they, so yeah. they, they, they didn't miss a they beat, tour? even though Gene was trying to be a you know a star. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, lick it up he into really an, yeah, lick it up into Animal Eyes, into Asylum, into Crazy Nights, into Hot in the Shade, into Revenge, into the Makeup Era, and they've been going ever since. No yeah. stops. Yeah. There you go. All right. Excellent choice, Butch. Let's throw it over to uh, Nick. Nick, what you got? All right. Uh, my number one uh, will be another sort of non-rock. Um, and and maybe to piggyback on what you were just talking about with the Soul Station album, uh, I'm going to go with a guy that uh, has been well-known in the soul and R&B um, genre and is known as the father of soul. And even though I really am not a fan of Rolling Stone, uh, could care less usually about 90% of what they have to offer, um, he does turn up number three on their list of 200 best vocalists of all time and civil rights leader and entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to go with, and I've talked about him once before, Sam Cooke. I knew Sam it. Cooke. <laughs> Sam Cooke, uh, to me, he's, he's so smooth, but he can have grit, fire if he wants to. And um, I'm a student of his music. I just find him to be, when I started comparing others that could kind of maybe come from the soul R&B genre, I just kept, he just kept winning out if there was a bracket Little Richard was close, who I really mm. love, but uh, Sam Cooke could do it all. And, uh, you know, his his music is just transcends. It still holds up. He was cut short, uh, you know, was murdered well, well before his time. But uh, I just love his voice. And he's been an influence to so many, so many people. And uh, it's just fantastic. And, and if you're going to find I have like these greatest hits, but the live at Harlem Square, which is the album that sat on the shelf for 25 years because it was a little too. I don't know, too aggressive, too raw. I mean, that thing is just, it just smokes. King Curtis in the band. It's just incredible band, incredible performance. He's got the live at the Cobo. That was really geared for white audiences, which is good. But the but the live at Harlem Square is just incredible. So if you want to, if you're a rock person and you're thinking about Sam Cooke, go right to that live album and uh, you'll see what I mean. But uh, he's great. Do you, want a, do you want an honorable mention or two? Sure, go ahead. You're right. All right, rotate out those three guys who are non-rock. I'll give you three rock guys. This was the hard one to leave out. Paul Rogers, Paul Rogers, Paul oh, Rogers. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he's, he, yeah. he's like the Sam Cooke of rock and roll to me. And he's about as close to what Peter challenged as possible, although I think he took a break. But he's been at it, and his voice is still really good. But I think he's had a couple little breaks. But I just I got finally got a chance to see him when he was doing the free – music and it was a triple bill with him uh jeff beck and ann wilson oh my talk about good, mm -hmm. great vocals i saw second that. second honorable mention i'm gonna go with uh little heralded but boy i really love him mike harrison from spooky tooth mm. uh you know sort of left the music business just such an emotional emotional motion voice that's him with the hamburg blues band that's a rarity right there but i just love his voice and his solo stuff if you could find it great this is a really good album and lastly and i've talked about him quite a bit uh jimmy doer from robin chowers band Absolutely. there is this oh, really yes. tough to find solo album go look go see what this goes for on discogs it's expensive um, yeah it ain't cheap i have two of them actually but uh of course you uh he, he's just so good <laughs> of course you do but he he's just so good uh and he's got that unique blend as well not only from scotland where all the best singers come from but uh <laughs> he's got that rare combination of power and then fragility or emotion in his voice so he can he can do it he, uh, he has songs out there that still move me to this day like uh the little known but uh on this album it's called the river so if everybody here what this guy's capable of or go back to stone the crows when he's singing with maggie bell my goodness what a voice on this guy so can't go wrong with those three awesome cool all righty all right andrew clark all right i'll keep this short he's already been discussed my number one singer of all time my number one band of all time phil Lynott from thin lizzy the greatest ever he's he just, I didn't find him until the mid-90s. 
but I started collecting all of his stuff right then. And I've been a fan ever since. I cannot imagine if I had to reduce all my music down to five men singing, not having him in that list. Cause that is truly, truly my favorite vocalist. Mm-hmm. And I, I have some honorable mentions. Okay. All right. Uh, Dio, obviously Jeff Tate, Eric Wagner from trouble. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's awesome. He was awesome. Phil Mogg from UFO. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another good one. Yeah. Oh, so good. John Bush from Armored Saint, Manthrax, awesome. <laughs> Matt Barlow from Ice Earth, one of the greatest singers, just so good. Uh, Snake from um, Voivod, Ray Alder from Faith Warning, uh, Craig Finn from The Hold Steady, and Jason Isbell from uh, Drive By Truckers, and then Jason Isbell in the 400 unit. Fantastic yeah. singer. Excellent. Has soul, has has rock, has country. He's just incredible. Jason Isbell. If you don't know him, go check him out. He's amazing. Well, when you're saying all that, Andrew, you made me think of something. Uh, uh, Sammy Hagar was just on Howard Stern. Stern. I just saw a clip. And Michael Anthony doing those harmonies live on on there. Check out that clip. The And Joe Satriani playing guitar. And they hadn't worked on, what were they playing again? Um, the chicken foot? It's no, uh, no, they're no. they're doing a Van Halen tr- kind of tribute thing mm-hmm. next year. Um, yeah, uh, the shine, uh, the pusher, shine, or what? I'm not familiar with the Hagar stuff, but Satriani hadn't even practiced it. Did you hear that? And I saw you could all tell the that he wasn't real fluid with it, but, but he just it was crazy. It was crazy. Go check out that clip. I swear to God, check out that clip. Yeah, with them playing. I cannot wait. And they for said that we've floor. only practiced it a couple times. You have to listen to Joe Satriani talk about it. It's a classic clip. But my God, Michael Anthony comes in on those harmonies, and he is still bringing it. Yeah, spot. I on. can. I am going to go out and see that too. I am too. I. I am too. I'm sold. Even though they were a little bit rough, but I liked it. So well, I, at least put, I wanted to mention it because put real Michael, drums behind it. It'll. Yeah. Yeah, because he was using electronics. So put real ones and let Jason Thunder back there. But Jason Bonham, of course, is a machine. Yeah. Yeah. When they go out, I'm I'm here's my money. I want to see these guys. I'll have fly. to drive to Minnesota because they're not coming to North Dakota, but I'll go. Yeah, get I'll, I'll here's my money. Cause they Absolutely. Freaking, and Sammy sounded great. Yeah, he does. Great. Yeah. Oh well. I made my day watching that clip. All right, Peter Jones, what's your uh what's your right. last one? Uh my last one should be no surprise to anybody who's ever paid any attention to anything I have ever talked about. It's the guy that started everything. We share the same surname. We're both Welsh. I can't sing. He can. And it's Tom, Tom Jones. The voice. <laughs> there's, just, there's no That's way to get around is. it. Um, you know, the story, I've told it a million times. You know, I watched, I've got a bunch of the stuff on, on DVD, you know, arguing with my parents in 1970. I'm, I'm not even eight years old yet because they won't let me stay up to watch This is Tom Jones. Um, it just absolutely took me over. Um, and he's never, ever left the number one spot and he never will <laughs> ever. Um, it's just untouchable for me. Um, uh, there isn't anything that he sings that I will not enjoy. Um, and for the knock that he was, you know, some, somehow, you know, a lesser legit, look at the duets, look at the duet he does. And you just brought up little Richard. Look at the duet he does with little Richard. Little Richard's great. They are killing it. And he is every bit as legit a rock and roll singer as anybody from that era. Yeah. He's singing. What's new pussycat. I get it. But listen to everything else. Huge. His brother, can you spare a dime? Listen to his What the World Needs Now. Listen to Try a Little Tenderness. His version of that is biblical oh. with a capital B. Delilah. Delilah. I love, Delilah. Yeah. I love everything oh. that guy does. Help yourself. Uh, I love me tonight. I could go on and on and on. And then oh. he disappears, comes back. If you only knew, I remember seeing him on Arsenio or somewhere and they're like, Tom's back. And he never left. And now he's getting all the cred that he deserved, and he's he's it. Quick honorables. Um, you had mentioned Stanley and Xander. That's great. I have to mention Chris Cornell and Lane Staley. Oh, yeah, uh, Chris Cornell. Yeah, 
These two guys, and you can, if you like the, I hate you terms grunge. I hate if you like the Seattle thing or you don't. One thing is indisputable. They had some seriously amazing singers between those two, Scott Whelan and even Eddie Vedder, who I don't in, like personally, is a really good singer. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to mention, for me, I have to mention Michael Sadler, uh, the singer for Saga. Saga. Um, oh. Just so smooth. And to into this day, he sounds exactly like the records all the way back in the 70s. Um, His solo album, Clear, is great. Uh, he's so good. And I'm going to mention another Scotsman, Mr. Alex Likerwood. And you're oh, like, yeah, he's great. There you go. He's if great. you don't know who that is, go check out Santana's middle section. Addiction, Marathon, Marathon, industrial Viva, standard. Shango. This mm-hmm. guy's voice is epic. It is yeah. so huge. It's so Arthur. melodic. And I absolutely yeah. love that guy. And yeah, he's great. Um, so those are those are my honorable mentions. And I've loved everybody's choices. And I, I think it's awesome, your passion for the things that, that have moved you and excite you. I think that's great. Well, I have four honorable mentions. Real go quick. ahead, Rand. We got – go ahead. We're good. Okay. Derek Shulman, lead singer for Gentle Giant. One oh, of my favorites. Yes. yes. John Wetton. John oh, Wetton's great. great. First time I heard him was on Lark's Tongues and Aspect Park, and I just like was blown away. I, I to this day I could listen to him for his, hours. His work by with the way, UK. On, by the way, on the Japanese co- copy of his solo album called Rock of Faith, the only the Japanese copy, he does God Only Knows on the very last track. And it's not available in America. Isn't that weird? When he's saying carry no cross. At the small oh. club in Chicago in the pre reunion tour, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I lost it. Absolutely lost it. It was m- so emotionally moving. It was stunning. Yeah, was so I miss good. him. I, I I was so sad when he passed away. Like I couldn't. I just couldn't believe it. But okay, those are the those are two. And my other two are Doug Pinnock and Ty Tabor of Kings X. I think those two yeah. guys are just so great. Uh, Doug sounds. To me, when I hear him, I first thing I thought when I heard him on the very first album, Out of the Silent Planet in 1988, I thought, he sounds like that guy in Rare Earth. I just want to celebrate it. Pete Rivera, right? The drummer. And then Ty Tabor, yeah. he's a John Lennon clone. <laughs> the guy is just He so sounds good. great, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Ty Tabor. I love I just, it. I love a, it when he sings. I've got a bunch of his solo albums, and I've got everything King's X has done. And I, I've met him, and I've talked to him, and, and, and they're just the nicest guys. And it's, it's a shame that they didn't get more popular because... They deserve it. I mean, if anybody deserves, you talk about underrated. King's mm-hmm. X is just, I don't know, it's kind of a crime, really. Well, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that I, I saw. don't know. Well, they're just kind of quirk. I don't want to use the term quirky, but, you know, they're not everybody's well, I taste. Think they're, I think they're, but they're a musician you know, band. The description yeah. I first saw on them was an article in, in Kerrang! where they had them on the cover, and I'm going, yeah. who are these guys? And they said, take ZZ Top and Rush and put those two in a blender, and you've got King's X. Yeah, but you got to sprinkle the Beatles on top of there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So well, that was the what Beatles they said. That. Faith, that was their Pope motto. loves? Good God. How much Beatle, How much more Beatles could you get? And you, have, you even have to put a little Sly Stone in there, too. Sliced well, my favorite point, my Peter. favorite song by King's X is "Lost in Germany." Just listen to what Ty Tabor plays on the rhythm guitar, and I've heard it live. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> I couldn't do that and sing that yeah. song. There's no way I could do that. His rhythm playing—I know he's a great mm-hmm. lead player. Kind of reminds me of Robin Trower at times. But my God, the stuff he does on rhythm is—he's like Jimi Hendrix. You what? know that was. And Eddie Van Halen. Those guys had played. Were right. playing really complex rhythm guitar, and they never got. Uh, you know what I mean? Accolades by the guitar players for the rhythm playing. Well, and listen I to think... Eddie Van Halen's rhythm tracks. Exactly. Don't be yeah. Ty Tabor's very complex. He's really a great rhythm guitar player. Plus, he That's did a... that. Deep drop, I would suggest. I would suggest that had had King's X been in the seventies, their legacy would be completely different. Oh, absolutely. For I sure. agree a hundred percent. They just sound like they're out of place, don't they? Yeah, they do. You can't listen to them and then listen to Warrant. Even though they, yes, even though you that can. trio, oh. yeah, you can listen to both. <laughs> but if they would have started out in the early seventies, like when Rush did, think about it. Yeah. Oh my God. They would have fit right in. They yeah, they just have. came up too too late, I guess. Yeah, it just happened. But it's better to have them than not have them. Absolutely. But what's interesting is all the Seattle bands that copied them all broke up, 
And King's X is still going. Their last album, Three Sides of One, is a masterpiece. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard it. I got to pick it up yet. Oh, it's so good. Oh, my God. Well, Rush will tell you that sometimes staying just one periscope depth below surface level allows you to kind of live a longer life. You come up, you you submerge and people take shots at you. So that's they, tr- you, good point. They you know, it's funny, right man, below the so... surface and allow them to just do, they never sold out. Not once. But look, they never got that, uh, that, that status where they're like superstars. Yeah. You know, right. a lot of these bands hit that status and then it'll break the band up because they can't maintain it. They just can't, they'll never hit it again. If you just kind of put out your stuff and keep it that that's a perfect analogy just kind well, of there's like there's that. a rumor going around that rush wants to find a drummer and do some more music did you hear about that that was big yeah. news i saw yeah, martin said, talked about oh, it martin talked about it yeah oh that's right he yeah he did a video on that didn't he grant um, I got the real, can i real quick in my honorables Oh, okay. I thought, okay. I can't. All right. No, yeah, I'm sorry, right, but right, 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 well, at this point, give your honorables and then we'll wrap it up. Because <laughs> we're Paul going Pierce. on tangents. Oh, yes. Rand Kelly Paul Rogers. do a prop. <laughs> but the, all right, go ahead, Butch. Paul Rogers, Frank Domino from Angel, Marvin Gaye, Jay Buchanan and oh, Robin yeah. Jones, Tom Jones, Robin Zander, D. Steve Snyder. Marriott, Brad Delp of Boston, <laughs> Bad. Alfred, yeah. Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> Gene Doug Simmons. Gray of the Marshall Tucker Band, who I think is the most underrated of the Southern rock singers. Um, Johnny Cash, Peter Steele of Typo Negative, and Paul McCartney. Holy okay. shit. <laughs> what a list. We've given you at least 120 people here today, ladies and gentlemen. So That's an eclectic list. I narrowed there, it down Butch. a little. <laughs> That's good, Butch. All right. All right, Rand, give us your, per- give us your plug, and then we're going to wrap this one up. No easy access to find a way for me. Yeah, this is my first debut album, guys. And I'm so proud of this. These are the demos that I had on cassette from the mid-80s and the and the early 90s. And uh, if it wasn't for Ryan Gavalier, these, these songs would have died with me. But he picked seven songs. It's 34 minutes and 34 seconds. And it can be heard on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music. And if you want to buy it, you can get a $7 digi- digital download or a $12 CD at randanthonykelly.bandcamp.com. And there you go. Boom. Please help. All right. Gentlemen, let's wrap this dog up. I want to thank Butch, Nick, Andrew, Peter, and Rand. Thanks for that plug, Rand. We couldn't do this show without that plug. (laughs) If you'd like to be on these panels, you too could be on these panels. We do have a Patreon. We also have a Kofi. We'd love for you to buy us a cup of coffee or a pint. We also like Donos. I do like donuts and I don't know. We do this out of the kindness of our hearts and we're also just music addicts. So we have to have an outlet somewhere. So I want to thank this panel. What a great topic. We went a little long, but you know what? It's all about the conversation. So gentlemen, I bid you adieu. Um, Please like subscribe. You know, the whole routine. All right. We'll see you gentlemen. Thanks so much.